Okay, everybody, we're about to begin, so if you could please take your seats. Thank you. All right, so now we, uh, we have a talk from, uh, where are you? Uh, yes. So we have a talk uh, entitled Capitalist Power and a Hybrid Between Property and Debt by Jong Chul Kim, who has just completed his uh, postdoc at uh, the Max Planck Institute for the Study of Societies in Cologne and will be starting another postdoc at the Universidad Carlos III in Madrid. So thank you, John Chul, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I'm very glad to present my paper here. Uh, uh, my research, uh, main research topic is uh, origin and poly economy and ontology of, of modern banking. So today I'm trying to my, the adopt, uh, contrib make some contribution uh, to the theory of capital power uh, based on my own research. So I'm using, try, I'm, I'm, today I use a very uh, unfamiliar concept such as the trust and the, the hybridity of the money and debt. Uh, I hope you will be familiar at the end of my presentation. Mm, according to theory of capitalist power, the, the difference of the capitalist power from the previous one is, the, uh, is that the commodification of power, the capitalist power trying to, capitalist power quantify, reduce qualitatively diverse form of power into vendable commodity. Uh, so, the capitalist power uh, exists as a form of fi finance. And then due to the, this finance form, the capitalist power extend, can be extended on, on an ever-increased scale. And this capitalist power uh, began to penetrate society when the power of government to tax uh, capitalized uh, as a package of uh, vendable finance is a, the government bond. So uh, I just uh, summarize, uh, briefly summarize capitalist power. But uh, from my, based on my uh, the study of history of modern banking, what is not fully addressed in the theory of power is that there is some, thing, there is some, something is not, uh, are not fully addressed in the theory. Uh, for example, some form of finance such as uh, the credit instrument and money is has has have existed for millennia. It is all is a is all form of a finance form. But the other form of finance, finance such as banknote and equity, is uh, new, uh, create and it created with the beginning of capitalism. So from my point of view, point of view. The, this difference probably very crucial to understanding what is a capitalist power, but in the in the theories well, is not fully. Yeah, yeah, it is a touched, is explained from my point of view. Not was is not fully addressed, and also public debt. Uh, according to theory, public debt is the first systematic capitalization. Uh, the according to the theory, but. Uh, the public debt actually presupposes a new form of political system, such as a, a representative de democracy. So re representative democracy, its birth of representative democracy must be explained to understand what exactly, what is a capitali capitalization is. Also, Joint stock ownership arrangement is a new phenomenon. It just uh, beginning in the, with the uh, capitalism, uh, but it's, it's but it's not fully addressed that how the this new form of uh, new form of ownership arrangement contribute to generating capital capitalist power is not fully addressed. It. So. To clarify the, what is uh, this new phenomenon, I used the, uh, the, the concept, the trust. So I argue that major concept, equity, joint stock arrangement, representative democracy, banknote are the trust scheme. This definition, definition I, I argue that is contribute to make it some, may contribute to the clarifying 
the concept of capitalization. Uh, yeah, the trust is uh, uh, has been known as a English legal concept, even though it is very important to understand the, what is capitali capital <coughs> capitalism. Is it as uh, among the scholars is not well well known concept. Uh, it is as a legal concept. It is a double ownership scheme, and that makes it possible to exclusive ownership claim to be exist for the over the one over the same asset. So one one claim is a legal ownership claim by the trustees. The other is a equitable ownership claim by, uh, claimed by uh, claimed by the beneficiary. Because of this double ownership scheme, trust is a hybrid between concept of property and concept of debt. Uh, uh, trusted property is a legal yeah, legal property of the trustee because uh, legal ownership transfer from the beneficiary to the trustee. But at the same time, trusted property is debt of trustees because trustee need to pay benefit, benefit permanently as long as the trust maintain. So it is hybrid concept. So I'm trying to use this hybrid concept it, uh, to explain what is equity, what is a joint stock arrangement, and what is a banknote. So, but it's my my argument is not new. Is a, for example, John St John Locke defined the representative democracy as the trust, and some of the critical thinker argue that repre representative democracy is a means for the yeah, bourgeoisie to claim its class interest as a universal interest. Also, joint stock arrangement with the limited liability has been known as a trust. Also, banknote of modern banking is a trust. Uh, I argued in my early paper. <coughs> so here, I'm trying to I'm ask the, the theory of power to incorporate the, this idea of trust seriously to clarify the, what is a capitalist power. So I argue that uh, this incorpor incorporation allow the theory of power, theory of cap capitalist power, imagine a way abolishing the capitalist power. The way is abolish the trust, abolish the, the hybridity, abolish the double ownership. So where where do I get this concept of a hybrid or trust? It is a, uh, I said it is a legal concept, uh, but ontologically, money and debt is very opposite and inherently contradictory each other. We, conf we many scholars use uh, the concept money and credit very conf in a very confusing way. They the so I trying to uh, clarify what is it money and what is Credit is very contradictory phenomena because credit makes credit instrument is makes a credit debtor relation, but in contrast, money is anything can be acceptable uh, in the, uh, as a means for finally settling, settling the credit debtor relation. So money is a clearing and a settling credit debtor relation. Credit is a making credit debt relation. So it is a the very opposite thing. So so when I said it's a the money uh, modern banking, the bank mo modern banking and yeah, equity is hi the hybrid hybrid between the money and debt is very co self contradictory because it is combination of self contradictory things. Before capitalism, this hybridity of economic transaction was forbidden under the continental Roman and civil law tradition, where the right in realm, property ownership right, and, and the right in personam, created right, strictly divide. So this law tra in this, in this tra law, uh, legal tradition, this hybridity is regarded as crime. So why? I, Probably I need to uh, yeah, make I need to research why it happened, why they regard it as a crime. Uh, I assume that this hybrid team let the property owner 
too much power to, against the society. It is my assumption. But in this strict separation of blood in the tradi this communal tradition and the law of trust in communal country have supported hybridity of banking and joint stock arrangement. So because of a limited time given to my presentation, I'm trying to focus on hybridity of modern banking, including commercial banking and the shadow banking. Uh, I argue that shadow banking, is, uh, shadow banking here means that uh, bank-like like financial activity has been prosper for the last decades, uh, unregulated or, or lightly regulated. For example, money market mutual fund invest, invest, investment bank, banking hedge fund like that, mutual fund. Uh, I argue that shadow banking that expand American finance power in the recent decades use the same hybrid, hybrid scheme that modern commercial banking used in its origin around the second half of the 17th century. So the structure of my presentation is uh, three. First, I begin by explaining briefly the mechanism of open balance sheet financing in which it showed the relationship between commercial banking and shadow banking in the last uh, two, three decades. And second, I explained uh, how, the, how commercial modern banking used hybrid scheme. And the third, I explain how the shadow banking used the same scheme of hybrid, hybridity and how the, the, this hybrid scheme con contribute to the financial crisis of 2008. So as you see the, in the picture, is an you know, oversimplified picture show the relationship between the commercial bank, the point one, and the yeah, shadow banking, the point three and four. Uh, point one explains the traditional commercial banking relationship between the depositor and borrower and the banks. Uh, and the second, Second, secretization is in point two. Uh, actually, in the in the 20th century, the commercial bank has a, its own the liability asset, the portfolio that they, they, they made they made to the their borrower. So, uh, in, the, in the last decades, this bank no longer hold the portfolio of their loan asset within their balance sheet. They secretize. They sell it to the the third party uh, to the shadow banking. And usually invest banking provide a brokerage service between the selling of selling and the purchase of the securitized bond or securitized product. And to finance this brokerage, these banks use repo, repo. Is there is a repurchase agreement. Uh, it is method, borrowing method by selling collateral asset, securitize the product to the to the yeah, shadow banking today and promising to repurchase them at a later date. It is a, it's a financial skill. So, oh, so number, point, number four, money market mutual fund invest in triple A rate to the, to the securitized product. It's a very high quality of securitized product. So for, first I explain the number point one, how the point one commercial bank use the hybridity. Uh, as I said, this hybrid scheme is double owner scheme. In the modern bank, two groups, holder of bankers' note and the depositor, are the exclusive owner of the one and the same deposit. As you see the, in the picture, uh, picture, figure, one amount of cash creates two cash balance of the same amount, one for the holders and the other for the depositor. Uh, this is a mechanism of money creation by, by private banker. So this double ownership was invented by London Goldsmith Bank in the 17th century in England when they printed the additional deposit certificate and loaned them to the numerous third party. Uh, due, to the, due to the double ownership scheme, commercial banking is hybrid between deposit transaction and loan transaction. It is a lo deposit transaction because a holder of the bank's notes can withdraw fund at any time demand the practically ownership of fund remain hand of, in the hand of depositors. Uh, but at the same time, it is a loan transaction because a banker, la banker lend this 
phone, same phone to the third party and retain the owner's title of it. So ownership of the phone, in this case, ownership of the phone transfer from the depositor to banker. So how can the ownership of the thing can be transfer and not transfer at the same time? It's a self-contradictory and hybrid and double ownership. So as I said, under continental Roman and civil law tradition, before capitalism, this hybridity regarded as a fraud, as embezzlement. So on honest depository fungible things such as grain and money must keep 100% reserve to honor the right of deposit to depositor to withdraw fund at any time demand. So Bank of Amsterdam in the in the 17th century in the 17th century in the continent in the continent actually established to abolish this hybridity hybrid scheme of modern banking. So they maintain 100 cash reserve for the one 150 years years its foundation of 1609. So is yeah this system is a clearing that credit debt relation. Because of they, they use hybrid, they, they can collect, it. bankers collect a huge amount of money. But deposit would not withdraw their money uh, simultaneously. Some portion of money remain hand of bankers. So this money is a debt, debt of banker, uh, yeah, magically transformed to the, the banker's capital. So they use this capital for the long investment. Bank, investment. Uh, mm. This, this hybridity exposes the community to a new form of risk, uh, the bank run, like a bank run. So this is risk, risk is like a risk in a past puzzle game in, in which the loser is holding the puzzle when the music is stopped. So, and when the, when the financial crisis occurred, the big debtor, banks uh, ask, for, ask for the bailout. Uh, at the expense of tax, taxpayers' money, and the taxpayer money is paid for bailout. So this fictious, fictionally made made uh, bank money became magically became the real cash. So I argue that this hybridity widely used in the shadow banking system in the 20th century. So this hybridity is method that makes credit debtor transaction like a money transaction and makes credit instruments something like uh, money. <coughs> uh, according to Gordon and Matrix, uh, they argue that money like that instrument, such as money market mutual funds share and the repo, create a bank run on the money market mutual fund and the repo market and created, created the 2008 uh, finance crisis. Mm. Yeah, from the uh, from the po point of uh, the investor, uh, as you see the, our picture, this picture very looks secure. There is some reason uh, to the, but the, the securitized product that the money market mutual fund invest is very high quality yeah, product product. Uh, yeah, I, I skip that. So nevertheless, bank run occurred in the shadow banking. So I'm trying to use how the, the money market mutual fund share and the repo, repo use the hybridity. First, uh, I'm, I'm trying to explain money market mutual fund share. Uh, most institutional funds are open-end. It means that making it possible for their retail investor to re liquidate share, share on demand. So degree of the open-endedness is the different between the, the institutional investor. So hedge fund funds is less open-ended, but money market mutual fund is highly open-ended. So in 1970, Merrill Lynch introduced a new form of bank, the new form of, new form of share, share is called cash management account. So shareholder can withdraw money at any time by the writing check. So it, share, is, yeah, share became like a deposit. So it's a, a kind of a bank run uh, can occur in the, the, on the money market mutual fund. Uh, 
So like in the traditional bank, commercial banking, a double hybrid self-contradictory ownership scheme occurred. Uh, because owners were well invested fund is transferred and simultaneously not transferred. Because as I said, uh, in the case of commercial bank, the ownership title practically remained in the hand of shareholders because they withdraw at any time on demand. So ownership belonged to me. But the same fund invested by the fund to the third party. And then the fund, money market risk fund, retained the ownership title of the, the loan. So ownership is a transfer at the same time. So it is hybrid, and then two party, exclu exclusive two party own the, own the ownership over the same firm. Yeah. So as you see, the yeah, securitized bond in the point one um, money created out of thin air by commercial bank in, in a double owner scheme. Similarly, in the shadow banking, in number four, the money invested by money market mutual fund to buy the securitized bond is also created out of thin air by double owners scheme. This, by using this double owners scheme, United States, America absorbed um, yeah, huge amount of capital and resource from the ab abroad, and it boom, yeah, makes a boom in how it makes it made the housing boom at the time. Because of open-endedness, bank run happened uh, September 2008 on money mutual fund without United government's promise for temporary deposit insurance covering the all 3.45 trillion was money market mutual fund on September 19, 2008. Yeah, United government, U.S. finance system would collapse. Also, I, I, here, I'm trying to yeah, explain hybrid of repo. Uh, repo is a hybrid between the loan and sale. So uh, sale, is, sale is money transaction, because uh, when I pay the money to, to buy the something in the shop, so I, I can buy, buy. So there is no connection between the buyer and seller. So it is clear that any relation, credit debt relation. But loan is a credit debt, credit debt relation. Repo is first economically secure loan in which a credit creditor receive, receives security as a collateral to protect him herself against the default of a debtor. So sold security are collateral, price of a security are the amount of a loan, and the difference between the sold price and the repurchase price interest. So it is substantially the loan transaction. But it is legally, it is a legal form, is a sale. So there is a two advantages when loan contract contract is disguised as a sale contract. The first, it is excluded from the Chapter 11 bankruptcy law since 1984, for to secure the fairness between the creditor when the uh, uh, debt company goes bankrupt. It prevented that the creditor withdraw their asset unilaterally without permission, without court permission. So it is chapter 11. But because it is regarded as a sale, not a loan, so the creditor, the creditor in the repo can withdraw from the repo contract unilaterally when the debt goes bankrupt. So bank run. Bank run, it's a loan, loan can occur like a demanded deposit account in the repo contract. Uh, and the other advantage is what, what the repo contract, repo contract have, yeah, different from the other loan contract, is that ownership of collateral is transferred to the creditor. Uh, in the secure loan, in a, in a nominal, normal secure, secure loan transaction, actually collateral, ownership of collateral remain hand of debtor. But in the case of a repo, this collateral, ownership of collateral transfer to the creditor. So, and the creditor use this collateral for the, for the, for, for, for more, for more repo contract or use this collateral 
for the another collater collateralized uh, the contract. So from the perspective of creditors, they do not loan any money to debtor, even though debtor borrow money from some creditor. So it is make, it's kind of making mechanism of money creation out of thin air. So this hybrid is fundamental course for the run on repo market in 2008. So I'm trying to, my effort is that trying to develop the, this idea of hybridity or double owner scheme and the, the concept of trust to explain what is a capitalist power. And then uh, yeah, provide what is a radical general reform policy for the yeah, destroy, yeah, ob, yeah, reform the capital, capitalism. I believe it is abolish hybridity. For example, bank, in the case of bank, we establish bank's role as a clearing credit debt relation, a model on Bank of Amsterdam in the 17th century. It means abolish fractional reserve. In the case of shadow banking, abolish open-endedness. In the case of corporate reform, yeah, radically reconceptualize shareholder as a creditor. Because they are just, uh, when it comes to the responsibility, they suddenly become creditor. So substantially, they creditor. But the right to control the corporation is uh, over empower, yeah, overly empowered, the empowered, empowered. So in the case of representative democracy, we can yeah, yeah, abolish public debt and then uh, abolish double owners between the representatives and people. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dong Chil, well done. All right, I'd like to open it up t for questions now. So, James, two over there. Thank you, Zhang Chul. Um, I'm wondering about the, the temporal aspect of the loan. Because, the, I mean, the, the very thing you're criticizing, when I was doing my undergrad in economics and learning about banking, it's the very thing that gets celebrated, that the multiplier effect that's enabled by fractional reserve system is you know, what creates our money supply and then what's a lot, what allows for, you know, growth and, and things like that. And the, the tricky part of understanding that was the, the, the temporal component of the depositors and their demands on their own money and then the borrowers and their future obligations with that money and how the, the fractional reserve system allowed for an intertemporal coordination rather than kind of a collapsed temporal coordination, which seems to be what you're calling for, that creditors and, debitor and debtors need to be kind of operating in the same time. So I'm wondering if you can speak about that, that temporal component. Would you like to take each question mm -hmm. uh, one by uh, one? Or you can, we can yeah, I, I can hear the more question I for I three have or two. Okay. I have basically the same question, but with the technical language. So y you're, you're talking about a problem of mismatched maturities. Depositors deposit short-term loan to the bank, bank reloans long-term. And your solution is to collapse, or to use, to use Troy's language, to put everybody in the same temporality. Short-term money in, short-term money out. That's what Bank of Amsterdam did. Um, so question number one is why, why talk about hybridity as the problem? Why invent a new language? We have an old language to describe the problem, which is, which is that there's a problem of mismatched maturities here. And question number two is, it sounds an awful lot to me, but I could just be wrong about this. It sounds an awful lot to me like you're reproducing the Austrian critique of fractional banking. So I'm wondering to what extent, if you've thought about this, you are different from the Austrian critique. Um, and maybe actually as a sub-question to that, it's interesting that, or a comment, it's interesting that 
that we end up with an Austrian critique coming out of a capital as social power uh, <laughs> perspective. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, I think that you're presenting here uh, the problem as if it is a technical problem. And uh, having read your dissertation, I know that it's not exactly a technical problem that you're identifying, you're thinking about the cultural uh, specificity of uh, England in the 17th century and the political conditions and so on and how they were very crucial in the emergence of modern banking. But, but I, I, I'd like to point out something uh, at a more primitive quote unquote level of discussion. The movement uh, say away from uh, the gold standard or the movement away from specie money into a fractionally based system, and then towards a fiat money system. Uh, uh, this is not a technical transition uh, only. Certainly it's a technical development, but it's also the development of capitalism. In other words, uh, credit, uh, investment, the growth of equity, all of that has to do with the notion of capitalizing uh, future flows of income. So my question is, regardless really of the technicalities of the issue, do you really think that it's feasible to move and reform the system by some uh, way of reverting back to an earlier uh, arrangement that existed say in the 17th century in Amsterdam uh, without completely changing capitalism? And I think at the bottom of your conclusion, basically you hinted that all of the analysis is unnecessary at all because you say, let's change corporations to something such as direct democracy. If we have direct democracy, there's no point in discussing the nature of the banking system because you know, we have a completely different system anyways. So at the end, you, you are saying something that is, I think, uh, quite beyond the scope of your discussion. So if we revert back to the issue of changing capitalism by some sort of a, of a technical reversion, I'm just wondering if this is at all possible given the significance of uh, the discounting of future flows of, of earnings that are themselves based on expectations of what is going to happen in society. And those things change constantly. And maybe that is the reason for ups and downs in the volume of credit, the volume of ownership, rather than some technicality. So I, I think that you need in some sense to uh, connect the meaning of capital with the technical aspects that you identify and to, to question, even if you could change somehow the technicality, wouldn't this completely change the nature of capitalism? And if it would, what would be the feasibility of, of some transition like that? <coughs> uh, for the, in the question about temporal for the first question about that from yeah, Troy. Uh, yeah, it, it is true that my argument is uh, actually the, the economic texture, uh, con a textbook trying to justify the fractional reserve system by using the, some yeah, rational idea of yeah, mismatch maturity or the temp mul multiple index like, kind of this concept. But uh, my, uh, my, but through the my uh, study of study uh, here in Europe and with uh, Jonathan is that uh, some system makes, um, uh, allowed uh, some money, money created out of thin air and then this kind of system, uh, I believe is kind of means for government to locate a certain huge amount of resource to, to the certain part, especially while making, while making industry or big industrial, big industry. So this industry has been a big problem for our modern history because it is a mean, what I mean is modern banking is kind of a war, war making machine also uh, making make means for the making <laughs> industrial revolution that uh, destroyed our env environment. So basically, it is my the 
uh, basic, basic yeah, idea why I, the, this banking system must be abolished, and then why this certain means of uh, locate a certain huge amount of resource to, to the certain part, not, not through the whole, whole society, uh, must be uh, re reformed, is my basic idea. Uh, also, yeah, actually, I, I'm, not a, I'm not an Austrian economist. Mm. Basically, so actually, when I when I take a, this subject of research or mod, uh, about the original modern banking, I, I read a whole, whole many research re literature, and I find I, re, I I find myself so surprised that what the econ Austrian economist wrote, write is right. So it is it is what I find, and then the history of uh, banking history. It is a very accurate, and then yeah, I adopt, I basically adopt it. Um, yeah, for the question yeah, from the, the Jonathan, I think uh, we can abolish the money money mechanism and credit mechanism. I believe that it is we can, we need a credit 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 instrument, but. Uh, right now, it is credit instrument over expanded and occupied whole society. But in the previous history, the credit instrument used in only confined area between the merchant. So credit instrument needed for the market. But the way how to refine, re refine, re yeah, uh, confine this um, credit economy to the certain uh, market market is. Is, it is the best way is that abolish the modern banking. It, uh, it is uh, what I believe. Also, the yeah, money, yeah, money has uh, in history you, has it not been used for the market. It is a uh, symbolizing power of uh, emperor. Also, sometimes when it money used wisely by the emperor, is that clear the, and cancel the debt of people. So. The, power, the money is power is sacred, have to be used carefully by the community, and must, should not be dominate our society as a whole. So, so money market, money and credit, we need this, this two instrument, but it should not be dominate, uh, dominate our societies. It is a way, yeah, so the way, yeah, relocate to, to the proper, uh, little located these two instruments to proper locate properly is that abolish modern banking. So I believe it work, and then <laughs> and then for the you know, for the cooperation, I I, I, yeah, I study cooperation, and then what is the difference between the trust and the trust and cooperation? The cooperation is uh, traditional form of cooperation is work well in the feudal society. It's a, it's a form of a communi community, but with the beginning of capitalism, is a corporation a trust form of organization. It replaces cooperation, so and then the divide the the, law, the management representative and ownership, and the ownership can control the uh, and control the company and exert organized power against the society without. Uh, taking proper responsibility, so it is a form of trust. And uh, the way of uh, abolish is that, yeah, yeah, give give back the right, the right responsibility and, and right to the workers and manager, and then creditor making creditor as a just uh, shareholder as a creditor. I think. Yeah, it is a basic reform policy. Also, I believe that uh, yes, society not, should not be controlled by the, any person. So the way the society flow naturally is that some remove some critical, critical thing, such as uh, banking and uh, organize the, organize the modern business corporation. <laughs> and for the representative democracy, I, I, I recently I wrote some paper how the representative democracy contribute to the, the rise of modern banking. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. OK, 
Okay, we have about six minutes left. We can take maybe two more questions if they're brief and quick. So at the end of your talk, you had some proposed reforms, and do you have any idea of how to accomplish those reforms? Is it, are you advocating using legislation, or would you advocate uh, withdrawing from the present system and going into a new system that doesn't have those um, uh, problems? <laughs> Troy. Is there anyone? Maybe no, there's, else? there's no time for anyone else anyway, but oh. <laughs> but Troy can ask oh, his yeah. question. Um, yeah. oh, sorry, no. <laughs> um, I, I, I just wanted to laud Zhang Zhou for offering reforms. I remember the very first time I took one of Jonathan's classes, he begins by kind of saying, all of you critically minded political economic thinkers, if you were in the position of power right now, what's the first thing that you would do? And everyone is completely stymied because we have no idea how to translate our ideas on political economy into policy. And Zhang Chol offers some specific policy prescriptions, what the results would be, who knows. One of the reasons I like those prescriptions, and I think Jonathan's exactly right, that they don't seem that radical, but they would have a radically transformative effect. And I also think in saying, suggesting going back to an older model, it would still be a newer model because it wouldn't be conjoined to the, um, the, the governmental or the representation systems of government that existed then or didn't exist then. And that the suggestion is this older model within a system of direct democracy would be something radically different. Uh, for the question about, uh, can you can you rephrase your question? Yes, you you suggested some reforms. I want to know if you have any ideas how to accomplish those reforms. Too. Oh, if it can be done through legislation. Yeah, I believe that. Mm -hmm. As actually, it's a, mm, yeah, in a recent paper, how the bank modern banking used has been used as a war making means. So also, the way of competing one of the one nation against the other nation. So probably, the modern banking is a very effective. If the modern banking, better banking is a effective means for one society to compete against the other another society. Probably we need some international cooperation. How the yeah the abolish modern banking. So. Yeah, so we need some international cooperation, I believe that. But for the detail, <laughs> I, I don't have. And uh, Tro Troy, uh, can you re rephrase? Okay. It was more, more comment. Yeah, yeah. Thanking you for making reforms. Uh, yeah. I I was brave. I I'm very brave to suggest the <laughs> reform because I I, I would not yeah, suggest the reform in uh, any other uh, conference. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jung Chul, and everyone for the questions. <laughs>